What's up, y'all? Chris Faber here with your weekly Canucks Army Blackfish Prospects Report in video form here on the Canucks Army YouTube account. If you're new to this video, we do a weekly recap of what the Vancouver Canucks' prospects were up to this week. We show you some highlights. We talk about some players. We dive all into it. We break down everything that we wrote about in our weekly Blackfish Prospects Report over at Canucks Army. You can check the article out there or... You can rock with us here in the video. So let's get right to it. The Vancouver Canucks prospects had another busy week. We got playoffs. We got regular seasons ending, and we got a new signing to talk about as well. So let's start in Sweden as we typically do. We're going to dive right in with Jonathan LeCaramacchi, one of the Canucks top prospects. He was the first round pick in the 2022 NHL entry draft for the Vancouver Canucks. He is back from a foot injury that kept him out of the lineup for six weeks. He returned to play for Jurgarden in the Alsvenskan playoffs. Their team has swept that opening series. They are off to the second round. LeCarrie Mackey came back for the last two games of the series, and he scored in both games. So let's get to those two goals right now. Here is the first one here. Driving to the net on this one. Gets an opportunity to put it into the back of the net and makes no mistake. Then here on the second goal, he ends up finding the loose puck in the slot and burying it into the back of the net. A good little return for Jonathan LeCarrie Mackey to the lineup. This is massive, right? Like the kid needs a little bit of confidence going into the offense season and having a successful playoff run in the Alsvenskan could be huge for setting him up for a strong summer to build on what he's able to do in this playoff run because it was an up and down season some injuries a concussion not a great showing at the world juniors there's still a pretty bright future in this kid's career so we're hoping to see him turn it around here and have this off season be kind of boosted by what he does in the playoffs here now let's get into the SHL playoffs we had Philip Johansson still battling against Lucas Forcell game seven is actually going on right now as I'm recording this here on two Tuesday morning. Uh, they are going to wrap up their SHL playoffs. One of those two players is going to be eliminated. The other is going to move on. Philip Johansson, he had a big showing this past week. Picked up a goal and two assists in Thursday's game. Let's get to some of the highlights here. A beautiful goal for him to set up. The right shot defenseman likes to contribute offensively throughout the season. We expect to see him over here in North America, whether that's the AHL or the NHL. Still going to have to see what happens there, but he is going to come to North America next season and he could hop right into the lineup and likely will get some opportunities to get some NHL looks early on in preseason. So that's where Philip Johansson has been so far this season. A little bit of a slower week for Lucas Forcell, who was red hot when the SHL playoffs kicked off, but he did not follow it up with a great week this past week. Still riding in the top six uh, for his team, Fargestad, in the SHL playoffs. But like I said, the game's going on right now. By the time this video is out, one of these two players will be eliminated. We'll have to chat about that on next week's Blackfish Report. Finally, wrapping it up from Sweden, Elias Petter Anderson, that's right, DPD over there in Sweden. He's played six hockey games over the last seven games. It's been a busy little bit for Elias Pettersson. We call him DPD over here at Canucks Army. Uh, he's played in six games over the last seven days. Like I said, four of those games in the SHL where he only had a total ice time of the four games sitting at five minutes and 39 seconds. So not getting a ton of time in the SHL playoffs, which isn't great because throughout the season, he was a guy that consistently was rising in our ranks because of what he was doing in the SHL and playing a lot of minutes and showing well at the World Juniors. So it's, it's a little unfortunate that he's not getting this time in the playoffs at the SHL level, but where he is getting a lot of minutes is at the J20 level. He played in two games at the J20 level this past week and averaged 24 minutes and 10 seconds of ice time in those two games. So the kid is playing a lot in the J20 league. They rely on him to basically be, you know, the Quinn Hughes type of player for what his team does there in the J20. So at least good opportunity there. He's still getting a chance to skate a ton, uh, just not at the SHL level right now in the playoffs. So we'll have to see what happens with him moving forward in his team or bro in the SHL playoffs, but let's dive over to another team just on the cusp of the playoffs here. The Abbotsford Canucks, they clinched a playoff spot this past week with a, a overtime loss on Sunday against the Ontario Reign. So they are clinched into the AHL playoffs, which is great news. Now they're just fighting for position to hopefully host the three-game play-in series for the AHL playoffs. It's a weird thing. I don't know. Maybe we have to do a whole video on uh, explaining the AHL playoffs in its own right. But... One thing we know, the Abbotsford Canucks, they've clinched. So let's dive into some of the prospects there that have impressed us of late. Let's start with Atu Ratu. He's picked up eight points over his last 10 games, and that was actually when he was reassigned to the AHL. So it's been good to see him show well in an AHL role when it looked like there was quite a bit of struggling early on when he made that transfer. It was all fresh off of the trade. So it was a lot to handle for Atu Ratu. But with eight points over his last 10 games, he's finding a little bit of a scoring touch, and that's something that we obviously love to see from Atu Ratu down there, the 20-year-old center. 
center getting opportunity to play in sort of a 3C role. And uh, I'm curious to see what happens to that role when the playoffs roll around here. You're going to have an influx of talent with Vasily Pod Colson heading down, Christian Willanen coming down, a couple of other names joining the AHL team. But right now, playing some pretty good hockey, and that clinch is nice to kind of get, uh, you know, get a little bit of weight off your shoulders as you close out the remainder of the regular season here. Ratu, been picking up a lot of points of late. Did want to bring up RC Baines as well. Joined us on the Canucks Conversation Show last week, and that was a ton of fun. He's been scoring ever since, picking up three goals over his last four games. We have to show you this Odell Beckham Jr. style goal that our Steve Baden scored. Standing in front of the net, reaches back with the one hand, grabs the puck, ends up putting it down on his stick. I don't know if it's 100% legal, but it was an awesome goal to watch in the AHL. So our Steve Baines has been looking great. Uh, really impressed with this kid's play. Just more and more we start to say... This kid looks like he has NHL written all over him. Uh, maybe not a guy who's going to be in a top six role or even maybe a middle six role. Just feels like a guy that you would like to see blossom into being a fourth line winger who can contribute on a nightly basis at the NHL level. And everything that he's doing in his rookie season right now is pointing us towards that direction. Did want to bring up Jet Wu as well. He has been been playing good hockey. Like, uh, you know, it's been a little bit of a down 12 months, I'd have to say, coming in to the point that we're at right now with Jet Wu, like him being a prospect has fallen off a little bit in a lot of our eyes, uh, watching prospects here for the Vancouver Canucks. And Jet Wu lately has been playing extremely good hockey. It seems like it's a consistent thing now where every game he's just got a massive hit thrown. And it's been a lot of fun to kind of see him find his own here in his pro season. Still pretty young, right shot D. We'll have to see what happens with him, but the excitement level is is clearly rising with us and Jet Wu. So we'll have to see what he continues to do. And I think this AHL playoffs that are going to come up here, this be a really good showcase for Jet Wu to say like, hey, I've still got some NHL future left in me. So we'll see what happens there with Wu and the Abbotsford Canucks. Now let's wrap things up with some odds and ends. Quickly want to get to this one. Connor Lockhart, he picked up three goals in three OHL games this past week. So the, the young player continues to score at the OHL level. Josh Bloom, another guy, had a goal and two assists over his two OHL games. Had a real nice little uh, shorthanded assist that we want to showcase here real quick. The kid obviously puts up a lot of points while shorthanded. That's something we've learned about him pretty early uh, in doing our research about Bloom and and. Another beautiful uh, shorthanded assist here on this one. Finally, want to get to Kirill Kudryatsev, the left shot defenseman. Scored a beautiful goal. This is starting to come, become somewhat of a signature for Kirill Kudryatsev. Like he does these coast to coast plays. He's got another year in the OHL. So next year, if he's already feeling confident enough to pull a move like this and score a nice goal at the OHL level at this age, he's got another year of doing this. We're pretty excited to see what Kudryatsev is going to end up looking like next season in the OHL. Obviously showing well this season and signed that ELC just a couple of weeks ago here to join the Vancouver Canucks when his OHL time is up. But from what we've heard, he's going back next year for the OHL. You won't see him on an ATO with the Abbotsford Canucks this season or anything like that. Uh, Kudryatsev will be back in the OHL for next season. We will get to Max Sasson in just a minute here, but I do want to quickly mention Damon Gardner, who is a fourth round pick from the Vancouver Canucks in the 2022 draft. He was named the USHL forward of the week this past week, picking up a goal and five assists over three USHL games. And that puts him over a point per game right now for his season. He had a good week to get over that number there uh, off to Clarkson university next season. So good, uh, good, good season so far, right? He battled an MCL tear early on in the season, ended up coming back from that injury and uh, has really picked it up of late. He's been scoring a lot, putting up a lot of points. So good stuff from him in the USHL. It's kind of what we expected. We wanted to see, you know, high point totals from Gardner in this spot before he moves on to the NCAA next season. Finally, let's get to Max Sasson. We tracked 25 of his games over the past week, and I'm going to have to get my notepad out here uh, to explain some of these stats from him. So we tracked 25 games of his in this past season in the NCAA. Some impressive numbers. Let's start with this Corsi. 61.8% on the Corsi, 68.3% on his control of expected goals on the ice. A worrisome stat, only 44.6% in the faceoff dot, but he averaged 2 minutes and 25 seconds of shorthanded ice time per game, so they clearly trusted him him on the penalty kill and he was a player who played just shy of 20 minutes a night so getting a lot of opportunity there for western michigan our expectations for him is to come into the ahl lineup and play in a fourth line likely with danila klimovich which is a great spot to land because the organization obviously wants success for danila klimovich and i think they want to have success with max Hassan in that spot as well so he's going to hop into that role he's apparently already joined the abbotsford canucks they're down in winnipeg right now uh, to face against the manitoba moose so we'll see what happens if Sasan gets into the lineup 
very quickly or if he needs a little bit of time to kind of get adjusted to the pro level, get a couple practices in. They have some options. They've already practiced. Uh, he has been there for that. So should be in the lineup here pretty soon for the Abbotsford Canucks. It's a nice little addition. Like the thing that we noticed in his game was that extremely – defensively oriented when it comes to his play as a center. And I hope that makes a little bit of sense because he's really good at just being positionally sound as a center, being the low forward in your own zone, helping move the puck up, being kind of assistance for defensemen as they try and break out of their own zone. There was a lot of really smart things that we liked in Sasan's game. Not sure about NHL potential, but I think he's going to be a nice little addition to the Abbotsford Canucks. And, you know, if, if he shows well early, could be a nice little boost for them heading into the playoffs as well. So that wraps it up here for our Canucks Army blackfish prospects report here over on youtube gonna get to editing this pumping it out you can find the article on canucksarmy.com and you can check here every tuesday for our weekly blackfish canucks army prospects report for canucks army my name's chris favorite